Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about succulents. Now, I've been growing for succulents for two years and have been experimenting and didn't want to do any videos until I felt a little more comfortable about growing them. Now, the first thing that I learned is you need to find good sources of information. There's a couple of different channels that I like, but one of my favorites, favorites is Plantarina. She doesn't normally cover too many succulents, but she does cover soil mixes and uh, how to take care of plants indoors and she has really helped me. Another one that I really really absolutely love is a guy named Vic with succulent cravings. Now he doesn't talk during his videos at all. What he does is succulent arrangements that are absolutely gorgeous and he covers how he waters his succulents and he also covers the soil mix. You have to just google you know succulent cravings potting soil mix or succulent cravings waterings and he'll show you how to water and what potting soil he, he uses. But the reason I love him the most is he actually will show you different arrangements that he makes and he will show you the succulent. They're absolutely gorgeous usually and he'll put the name of the succulent on the screen. So you, I've really learned from him what succulents I think are really absolutely gorgeous and how to mix them together with color and texture. Now I have not become an expert on that. Um, that's one thing that I want to start working on now that I've learned how to grow succulents. But those are two channels that I really like. And you need to find your own information about how to grow succulents because the more information you have the more success you will have. The next thing you need to do is know your varieties. There are many different varieties of succulents. Some of them have the same needs as others. For example, there are succulents that grow in the winter and there are succulents that grow in the summer. And you need to know which is which so you don't mix them in the same pot because the winter growing succulents will need more care and watering in the winter and will grow more in the winter. Summer growing ones would be just the opposite. So mixing them in the same pot will set you up for failure. Uh, there, are other, there are different types of succulents that take different types of soil mixes and different types of watering. So it's best to just know your varieties. Now I have several different varieties of succulents and I, I don't think I'm going to go over the varieties in this video. So I'd like to do separate videos for each variety that I have. So look for those videos in the future. The next thing that you need to do is you need to have a good setup for succulents. Succulents need a lot of light. So you either need to have them in a south facing window that has a good deal of light or you need to have them in a setup where you have grow lights. Let me show you my setup and how I've been growing my succulents. Now this is my area for succulents. I have the lights off because they cast annoying shadows when I, I, when I try to film with the lights on. But I have lights right above my succulents. These are basic Walmart shop lights. They're Honeywell LED lights and they've been able to spark flowering, fruiting. These have been really, really good grow lights. I don't see the need for having anything different. But there are a lot of different grow lights and everybody has their favorites, so you need to research what lights you like. Another thing succulents need is an area that doesn't have a lot of humidity. Now I am in my grow room with a lot of uh, plants in it and there is a little bit higher humidity in here but my succulents seem to be doing okay. And I just need to watch the watering on them to make sure that the humidity doesn't go too high and that soil doesn't stay too wet. The next thing you need to think about is po the pots that you use. Now succulents do well in all different kinds of pots, but the ones that they do the best in are the terracotta pots. Now they do well in terracotta pots because terracotta pots actually suck up the water and wick it away from the roots. So that way it removes some of the water from the soil and allows it to dry out faster. So that brings us to watering. Let's talk about watering a little bit. Now I wanted to show you how I do my watering for my succulents. And first thing that I do is I actually save water from when I do showers and everything. And I usually water only once a week. So I've been having an issue with fungus gnats. And the reason I keep having an issue with fungus gnats is I continuously move new soil in here and the soil ends up being infected with fungus gnats and so we end up starting over. So every single time that I water now, I add mosquito bits. Now this is what mosquito bits look like and if you follow the directions on the package, you need four tablespoons per gallon of water. And I usually do this the night before. So this one is a two gallon container. This one is about a three gallon container. And so I do 
eight tablespoons, and this has a this has a measuring this has a measure in it. So I do eight tablespoons in this container and twelve in this one, and then I let it sit overnight. Then I take my handy dandy turkey baster, which I use a lot in this room, and I just stir it up. So the reason I stir it is just to make sure everything is activated. So those are nice and stirred. Now I could just water and allow the mosquito bits to stay in the pots, but I use these so often that I actually like to strain it. And you can compost the mosquito bits, but for time's sake I end up just tossing them. So the way that I found works the best to strain the mosquito bits is just to use one of my large sieves. And so I just uh, so I just pull out the little bits and then we have water that's ready to go. There we go. Now you see why I have t towels on my tables is it soaks up all of the mess that I make. Now mosquito bits are not harmful to the plants. The, you know, the solid parts are not harmful. They're just going to compost down. So you don't need to, you know, make sure all of them are out. So now we're ready to water the succulents. Now succulents do not need fertilizer that often. I usually like to just add Osmocote and I'm still working out exactly how to fertilize succulents. I'm going to get into that a little bit more later, but uh, my succulents seem to do just fine. I don't need them to have a ton of growth. So I don't add liquid feed to them when I, when I water them. So I'm going to use this bucket first and now we're going to water the succulents. So watering your succulents is the most important part of succulent care. Now, as I talked about before, you need to know your varieties. There are certain varieties of succulents that need more water than others. For example, this variety right here, and all of a sudden my mind went blank, so I will put the name of it on the screen. Uh, this one needs more water than the other succulents. So I water this one actually twice a week and I've put a pot and I've used a potting soil that holds water a little bit better. My cactus over here, it needs less water, a lot less water. And so I've used a potting soil that drains really, really well. It's a cactus succulent mix that has a lot of porosity in it and it holds very little water. And I end up watering this about once a week. The rest of my succulents I also water once a week. Now another thing that you need to be careful of is the type of water that you have and whether or not you overhead water. Um, I think most people who grow succulents suggest that you don't water overhead and that you don't allow the water to get on the leaves. Um, and that's the way that I do it. But there are other people who do succulents really well, like the succulent craving guy, Vic with succulent cravings that I talked about earlier. He does overhead water and seems to do fine. Now, I think the reason that I do, I would have problems here overhead watering is I do have hard water. And if you notice back here, let me see if I can get a little bit closer. I inherited these plants from someone else and I think that is hard water stains on the leaves. Now I'm not sure, but the leaves that I that have grown since I've had this plant do not have those markings. And that's basically what hard water stains look like. Another reason to not overhead water is uh, if you live in an area that's a little more humid or if the water does not evaporate quickly, you're going to encourage rot. So the way that I water you know, I've seen a lot of people use syringes, but I just don't have the time for that. I need something with a lot more capacity. So here's my handy dandy turkey baster. You saw how I was using that to stir with, and now I just basically use it to water with. I have my little reservoir of unfertilized water, like I, like I talked about before. And then I just go in and I fill the pots. Usually, I fill them about two or three times and what I'm waiting for is I want to see water coming out of the pot into the tray here and that means that I've totally soaked the pot and you can see the water coming out to the bottom tray there so that cactus has had enough water now and then we move on to the rest.
And then another thing, as you can see, you can actually get under the leaves of the fuller plants if you use something like a turkey baster that has a narrow spout and it has a lot of control on it. So I can put the water exactly where I need it. Now watering this way does take a bit more time. It takes me probably about 10 minutes to water all my succulents, but I actually enjoy it. Watering to me is a way to decompress, and it's also a way to be able to individually look at each plant. You know, see if there's any bug infestations, see if they're looking like they're gonna start rotting, you know, see if they look a little more water stressed than you'd like them to look, and that way you know you may need to up your waterings a little bit more. But I really, really enjoy the process of watering. Now, another thing I forgot to mention when it comes to watering is you need to make sure to have pots with holes in them. That facilitates drainage and keeps your plants from rotting. But you can grow succulents in pots without drainage holes. This pot right here was given to me and it does not have a drainage hole. And when I water it, I am really, really careful to make sure that it actually needs to be watered before I water it because it will hold water longer than these other plants. And the way that I do that is I just lift the pot. It's a little too heavy to lift with one hand, so I won't demonstrate that. I'm holding the camera with the other hand. But um, you just lift the pot, see how heavy it is, and you start to learn to gauge when it needs to be watered. Now, once you've figured out how to grow your succulents, you have the appropriate pots, you're watering correctly, you've figured out fertilizer, and you have them under good grow lights and know your varieties, the next thing you can do is figure out how to propagate succulents. Now I've tried propagating a few times and I'll probably make, it, make another video about it, but it's worked out really well. They are really easy to propagate. So you can actually increase the amount of succulents that you have without purchasing any more. The one thing about propagating them is they do grow pretty slowly. Succulents definitely teach you patience. Now I'd love to hear about your succulents. What types of succulents are you growing? How do you water them? What kind of setup do you have them in? And have you learned how to propagate? If so, which methods are best for you? And hopefully my videos have been helpful for you. If they've been helpful to you, please like, subscribe, share them with your friends, and go have a wonderful garden adventure. Bye.